Hey guys, Jungle Explorer here, and today we're going to solve a common problem that most Americans with American made vehicles face. And that is how to power a dash cam. Um, you know, like, well, man, just plug it in, dude. Well, the thing is, is that American made vehicles like GM and Ford and stuff like that, they have an always on power port or cigarette lighter, 12 volt uh, socket. Um, they, they don't, they're not, um, cigarette light, they're not ignition controlled. Uh, every GM vehicle that I've owned does not have an ignition controlled 12 volt socket. Um, like your Hondas, your Toyotas, all your foreign vehicles, they have ignition controlled sockets. So when you turn the ignition off, the power to the socket goes off. But American made vehicles, at least all the ones that I've ever owned, don't have that. So when you plug in a dash cam or some kind of electronic device, and you don't drive your car for a few days, you come back and your battery's dead. So I'm in a, a 2011 Silverado 2500 HD work truck here, and I am going to try to figure out how to create an ignition-controlled 12-volt socket to power my... I got a rear-view mirror dash cam, okay? And it's actually a dash cam and an actual rear camera. So when I plug it in, even though the vehicle's not on, the keys are not even the ignition, it turns on. It's ready to go. If I forget to unplug this sucker, it's feel, it, it's it's pulling juice. I mean, it's powering this whole display. It's uh, taking, uh, you know, 1080p forward and reverse uh, cameras. And so it's going to bleed the battery down pretty fast. And within overnight, I'll probably kill my car battery. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to turn one socket into ignition controlled socket, especially for electronic devices that need that need to be in the car and stay on all the time. So here we go. Let's I'm going to show you how to do that. Most cars have a removable uh, kind of a little trim here that goes around or easel or something. Most times you can just kind of pull it off if you kind of grab it. Almost all vehicles nowadays are made the same way, so you know there's no screws to take out. You just simply just pull the stuff off. Do it gently. You don't want to crack anything, break anything. It is plastic. You know, it's not like in the old days where you, everything was screwed on and you had to remove a bunch of screws. Okay, so we we've, we've pulled that off. Now uh, down here, okay. So now we see our cigarette lighters. Or, or our DC power ports here, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and use the driver's side one here. Okay, so the first thing we've gotta do here is find out um, what our positive and negatives are. Now normally on a vehicle, red is positive, black's negative, but never assume anything, okay? So I'm gonna use this DC tester. Basically, uh, you connect it to a solid piece of metal on your vehicle that's not painted or, or anything, so you gotta ground or your, your, to your negative and then you can test wires with it. You can either poke it into the wire or find a bare spot on the wire. Okay, so you see, when I go to the red wire here, get it up here where you see it a little better. When I push it down in there, the light comes on. So that tells me that this is, this is the positive. When I push it over here, nothing happens. Only when I put it over here. So this is the positive, this is the negative. Okay, on every vehicle, uh, there's going to be a, an interior fuse box that's inside your cabin, and there's going to be an engine fuse box. This is a 2011 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, and none of the fuses on the interior fuse box in, in the cabin are ignition controlled. They're just all straight powered. Uh, so I had to come out here to the uh, engine compartment fuse box and go through. Now, you're going to need an electrical tester like I used inside or a voltmeter and you're gonna need someone to turn your engine on and off. And if you look right here, every one of these fuses has a little tiny um, uh, little piece of metal sticking out and you can simply test to each one of those with somebody turning the ignition on and off to find one of the fuses that is ignition controlled. Now, because this is for a DC outlet, I prefer um, the uh, 15 or, or 20 amps. And I did find that this 20 amp fuse is ignition controlled. Not all of them are ignition controlled, but this one turns on and off with ignition. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull it out. Okay, just pull it out of the, uh, the space there. All right, now, 
you're going to need to order a fuse jumper for the right sizes of fuses. Now, vehicles have three different sizes of fuses, and I ordered this jumper off of Amazon.com, and it comes with the three different uh, styles of fuses and some extra fuses to go with it. Now, what this is going to do is provide a leg off that fuse. Now, it has two fuse slots, one for the existing fuse that you're, you took out, and that you put that in there. Okay, so you take your existing fuse, the 20 amp that you took out, and it also has another slot right there for another fuse. Now, it comes with 15 amp. Uh, it comes with a little package of fuses, and these blue ones are the ones we're going to be using, and they're 15 amp, and that's big enough for our, uh, our connection. So it's going to go right in here on top of the other, and it's going to provide a 15 amp fuse service for that uh, that outlet. So put that down in there. So we put both the fuses in there. Make sure it's well seated. The jumper comes with a connector and already installed on it. So we'll just take our wire to the cabin and put that in there and crimp that thing down. Always check your crimp, make sure it's solid. I feel a little bit of play on the factory crimp, the one that came from the factory. I'm gonna crimp it again. Okay, you can never crimp these things too hard. Make sure there's no play. All right, now go ahead and just replace this into the, the slot you took it out of. And now we've made a connection to the the cabin. So I'll put a link to this jumper system uh, that I bought in the description of the video. Just click on the show more and you can find that little jumper right there. How you're going to get this wire from right here into the cabin is up to you. You're going to have to find a way to get through. Now you can route it through the, uh, the door jam and by the door over here, but there's a risk of it getting pinched by the door and cut. That would not be good. So there is some wires that go through the wall right there. There's a rubber boot, it's a water sealed boot. I've poked this piece of bailing wire through it to fish it through. Let me get in there and get focused on it. I don't know if you can see it in there, but anyways, I poked it through that boot and then I'm going to pull the wire through with that and I'll show you on the other side and then wire it through there. So let me pull it through and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so I finally got the wire run. I went through multiple ideas of how to get this wire here. Decided to go with a fuse box in the, uh, in the engine compartment and run the wire through the firewall, which was a lot more difficult. Uh, no way to show you where it was because I couldn't how I did it I'll just show you some pictures here throw them up there show you where I went through on that boot and how I secured it underneath the steering column the main thing there is just keep the wire out of the pedals and anything that twists and turns that might pinch it uh, so I zip tied it to the other wires you know the old saying easiest way to where easiest the easiest place to create a river is where a river already flows basically follow the wires um, and that's what I did and I'm just bringing it around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect it into To this red wire here, which we've already determined is the positive um, So we're going to cut this and then use a splice Connector to connect it in and that should give us a uh, Ignition controlled Wire I'm going to leave a little extra wire. I always like to leave a little slack just in case I need to make some Some uh, changes in the future. Give it a couple inches all right, so I've got this pretty good uh, connector kit here that I've got off Amazon.com. You know me, I'm doing all, all kinds of projects, um, and so I always need all these kinds of connectors and things. So I'm going to use this small red connector here for this project. That's all I need is one splice connector. Right there, just going to splice it in. Come down here, cut this wire right there. Okay. Skin this. Let's take the uh, skin this off a piece here. Okay. Do the same thing right here. Let's 
Slide that in there. Going to use the, the red mark here to crimp her down. I always like to pull on it, make sure it's a good solid connection. Now we'll put this end in here, right there. Make sure it's all the way in. Crimp that down. Make a pull. All right. Okay, so now give me this out of here and hide the wire back here behind the molding. Go ahead and work our dashboard in here. Got to get it behind the All right, so we've got that back in, put the dashboard back in and everything, got it wired in. It's time to give this thing a test run. So let's plug it in. It does not come on. So now we know that we don't have constant power there. Let's turn it on to the on position and looky there. There we go, turn the key off. Shut down after five seconds. Turn the key back on, and ladies and gentlemen, we have an ignition controlled 12 volt socket on a Chevy Silverado. Now we don't have to worry about that uh, running the battery down, and that is how you do it. It's not easy, it's not hard, but it's not easy. It's just got to get in some uncomfortable situations um, and run some wires, but uh, it's actually not that difficult to do. You can do it. Just got to do some techniques there, like I showed you. Find find your power sources. Find that fuse out there in the breaker box, um, in the fuse box, one that's ignition controlled. Once you do those steps and you find that, run the wire. Now we have an ignition controlled outlet, 12 volt outlet on an American made vehicle. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and comment. Please share my videos and channel on social media facebook twitter instagram all the products you've seen in this video um will be listed underneath the video in the description area just click on that show more and you'll be able to uh, see those there also my social media links are down there in the description under the show more button until next time this is the jungle explorer signing out